Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. You can see the sun rising in the background with a reddish color and uh, we're actually going to have a partial solar eclipse today but I'm thinking that the clouds will make it impossible for me to observe it. Since my last video on the Flatmaster 150, I've gotten a few comments and thought I would revisit the subject in this video. Mostly commented was why don't you mount the flat panel inside your observatory, so that is what I'm going to do in this video. I'm also going to revisit the Nina Flat Wizard and use the dynamic brightness setting to see if that will make better flats and speed up the process. One thing that I think I mentioned in the last video is that the Flatmaster 150, or at least in my version, is very bright, even at the lowest setting. This means that I will use a cloth today to get the brightness down just a little bit, but still be able to adjust it. The main reason for this is that I want to get exposure times of at least 3 seconds with my ASI 294mm Pro camera. Why is that, you might wonder? Just to avoid the uh, banding that could occur when using uh, really low exposure times. You can process these out when stacking your flats, but I want to be on the safe side and use an exposure time of at least three seconds. Taking a look in the observatory, you can see that I have my telescope in my observatory park positioned and I've aligned it to the flat master that I mounted on the wall and I also covered it with a piece of white cloth just to dampen the brightness slightly but I'm still being able to adjust it of course. You can see that I have a USB cable down to my main control computer and of course I will have to do something about this cable since all other cables are inside the walls or inside the floor but that will be a later task I would say. So let's go inside and check out Nina. So the first thing I'm doing when taking my flats is to connect to my PC in the observatory and I'm using the Chrome remote desktop. You can use what is best for you. I'm starting Nina and at the same time I have also disabled the infrared night vision on my camera so it does not interfere with the flats because that camera is directed at the vicinity of where the telescope is pointing to. I will connect all of my devices inside Nina. Now I am not touching the uh, telescope right now, it is parked in the correct position. I don't want to use any guiding today. I also cool my camera to the same temperature as I always use for all frames, uh, regardless. Some would say that that is not necessary, but I would like to do so anyway. But I'm not doing that for the purpose of this uh, demonstration. Moving over to the flat wizard. I normally take 40 flats and 40 dark flat. I would change this to 1 now because I don't want to take 40. And I will change the dark flats to 0 because I don't want to take any dark flats right now. Since I'm using my observatory park position right now, I'm not going to slow to zenith uh, or move the telescope to another park position. 
I'm going to switch over to multi mode because this is where you can take flats with all of your filters at once. I'm going to demonstrate how that works now. I'm also using the dynamic brightness setting as pointed out by many of you uh, last time. And that means that you can specify an exposure time and the uh, flat panel will then adjust accordingly and find the correct brightness level. As I said, the uh, Flatmaster 150 is a bit bright, even at the lowest setting. And uh, I was having problems getting an exposure time high enough with even the lowest setting. That is why I'm using a cloth uh, over it. So for all the broadband, I'm using a, a minimum uh, flat panel brightness setting of 20 and a maximum of 30. I'm using a setting of a flat step size of one and Nina will try to increase in steps of one, but after a couple of steps, it will calculate where it think it should be so if you are far off, it won't try all of the uh, brightness settings in between. It will jump to what it is anticipated to end up on. And that works fairly good, I would say. For all of my broadband uh, filters, I want three and a half seconds. I want a mean target of 50%. I want a mean tolerance of 5%. You could increase this if you run into problems. Without the cloth, I noticed that uh, the luminous filter was so sensitive that it uh, could not find the, the correct values to expose a flat uh, between two of the brightness settings. 22 was too low and 23 was too high. If you run into that problem, you could either dampen it with a cloth or you can change the mean tolerance uh, setting to allow for a bigger window. For the narrowband filters, you would need to have a much higher brightness setting. I started off with a minimum of 75 and a maximum of 175, because there are a lot of difference between, let's say, the H alpha filter and the O3 filter. I have the same step size and the same mean target and tolerance setting, but I'm using an exposure time of six seconds this time. Three seconds was not long enough and I could not get the uh, LED panel bright enough. And I want to have the same configuration on the panel cloth wise, so to speak. I don't want to have to change anything so that is why I have a higher setting here. I'm enabling all of the filters and I'm clicking start sequence. Now it will try the first filter and that is a luminance at the lowest setting of 20. As you see, it goes up 21, 22, and then it's uh, found its target. And when the target is found, it takes the flat and the lever turns off here when it's finished. It's moving on to the next filter. It starts in the same way. I would say that this is uh, needs to be a bit brighter. So it actually found and calculated a value of 28 uh, after the first two and could finish that with a single exposure. Uh, it's moved on to green now. It is anticipating 26. Also found that to be within the tolerance and finished with that filter as well. We can just check on the files here. You have specified a catalog where the uh, images will be stored. In my case, I just have a Nina folder and it will create dates under that. You can specify it to create other things as well. Here you can see it has finished with all of my broadband filters right now. 
we have the LRGB and the 3.5 second exposure for each of the filters. I had to abort the sequence and adjust the maximum panel brightness setting to 200 for the narrowband filters and I will continue the uh, wizard uh, for the narrowband filters now. The narrowband filters will obviously take a bit longer since the exposure is 6 seconds instead of 3.5. It has now found a target brightness setting for the S2 filter and has moved on to the H alpha filter. As you can see here in the file name, I've also included the focus position because I want to have the exact same focus position that I used for my light frames. That can be achieved automatically in Nina if you're using the focus offset feature that is available in an unplugin that you can install. You can then instruct Nina to save uh, the offset uh, values when using the autofocus feature and if you position it to your reference filter when starting Nina and you set the uh, autofocus or focus position for that filter it will automatically adjust the focus position when you take your flats like mine has done here and I think that is very handy. The flat wizard has finished and I have flats here for all of my filters and I didn't uh, have to go out to my observatory. I just had to park my telescope to my observatory position and the flat master will turn on automatically since it is connected uh, through Nina in the equipment tab and to my computer through a USB cable. We're looking at a single flat frame for the H alpha filter. So with this addition and this new video about the Flatmaster 150, I would like to thank you for watching this video and as always if you like it give it a thumbs up, tell your friends about this channel if they are interested in astrophotography. And consider subscribing if you're not already doing so. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.